Coming soon to Heritage Auctions is our vintage poster signature auction. In a time where movie theaters are not showing new movies, we are offering many vintage posters that are throwbacks to time gone by, such as Casablanca, a rare prize desirable by any fan of Michael Curtiz's all-time classic film, this magnificent six-sheet is making its second appearance at Heritage, an irresistible opportunity for collectors. Dracula. This film was a major success for the studio upon its release in February 1931 and solidified Universal's association with the horror genre. The studio decided to get a bit creative with their first reissue of Dracula and issued the film with green tinting on some of the prints. To mirror the green tinted prints, the studio printed a one sheet that used the same dark greens and black, giving the headshot of Bela Lugosi a very menacing pose. The image of Lugosi is as classic as it gets and is incredibly similar to the original Style A one sheet. This poster was unknown for many years and to this date, no other copies of this 1938 re-release one sheet have surfaced. London After Midnight Considered to be one of the holy grails of lost cinema, the last known copy of this classic silent horror film starring the great Lon Chaney was destroyed in a fire in an MGM studio vault in 1965. Starring the Man of a Thousand Faces and directed by Todd Browning, who is most known for directing Dracula and Freaks, the film is based on a script by Browning and depicts Chaney as a vampire, though in makeup only. Posters for this famous horror film have been as elusive as the film itself over the last 80 years, but Heritage has had the distinction of bringing to auction an Argentinian one-sheet only twice before and the US one-sheet in 2014 for a world's record price. The Empire Strikes Back Considered to be one of the more rare posters in all of the Star Wars trilogy, this is one of only a small handful known to have survived. Perhaps done as a test printing of the international edition of the poster, this version includes images of Lando Calrissian, Boba Fett, Cloud City, and more. When the studio made their final revisions to the now iconic Gone with the Wind style one sheet, those additional elements were removed from the original Roger Castell design as they were considered too busy. They also went with a darker color scheme, mostly blues and purples, losing the vibrant reds and oranges from Castell's original vision. This is a once-in-a-lifetime chance to get this rarity as so few have surfaced. It's nearly impossible to find original paper from Charlie Chaplin's first feature-length film as a director and main star, making this exceedingly rare three-sheet an impressive find. The Kid was a landmark project for Chaplin, not just as the comedian's transition from shorts to full-length pictures, but also for Chaplin's innovative intertwining of comedy, tear-jerking drama, and social commentary on poverty and the inadequacies of child welfare services. Chaplin's impactful performance is often credited with the loss of his own newborn child, who died only 10 days before filming began. This personal tragedy, combined with the charms of child vaudevillian Jackie Coogan, cemented The Kid as one of the greatest films of the silent era. At nearly 100 years old, this stone litho poster looks wonderful after receiving partial touch-up to the folds, pinholes, and a few small chips and tears. The Jazz Singer This original trolley card for The Jazz Singer, the first feature-length sound film, is the only known copy to have ever turned up. Starring Al Jolson, this is the only poster we are aware of for The Jazz Singer that actually uses the words see and hear to announce the groundbreaking sound element for which it is historically remembered. These posters were used in trolley cars or subways and so were only produced for major cities, as only the big theaters were made ready for the showing of this innovative sound film. This is the only certifiably authentic copy of the card known to exist. Included are two theater snipes removed from the lower border to flank the theater name. Sunday, March 18th, as shown on the snipes, is the year for 1928 when the film was distributed nationally. <laughs>